Yo, what's going on, everybody? It is 1 p.m. here in Crystal Lake, Illinois. That means it's time for another live stream. Today is, what's today? Is it Tuesday? I think it's Tuesday. It's May 9th, 2023. Uh, and we're going to do another unboxing today. Today, we got a package from Rabbit. It's a little one. I think I know what's inside here. I dressed accordingly. I wore uh, a rabbit shirt, a specific rabbit shirt uh, for the occasion. Uh, but we'll get to that in a minute. First, I want to say hi to everyone listening on the podcast on the audio only version. All six of you guys that are doing that, I appreciate you guys very much, whether you're listening to it on the way back home from work or on your run. I hope you're having a good trip out there. Weather's nice. It rained all yesterday, but today it was nice and sunny. Started out like cool and foggy and then turned into just a nice sunny spring day. I hope that's what you guys are having too. If you got like if you're in the car, hopefully you just got the windows down. I mean, you might have to crank this up a little louder because of the wind noise and stuff, but like I think overall, no over under. It's worth it. Stick your arm out. You know, do that thing with your hand where you can feel the wind. I think you're going to enjoy that. That's a good. This is a good day for it. I feel like. And everyone watches on YouTube later, but not live. Welcome to the number one podcast to listen to. While you're trying to think about whether you need to buy a couple more singlets for the summer, the answer is yeah, probably. It's just going to be a hot one. I feel like this winter was. There was a couple of cold stretches this winter, but it was pretty mild. And I always feel like when it's a mild winter, it's a hot summer. So yeah, you're gonna you're gonna need some more singlets. The answer is yes. <laughs> all right uh we got tim sue in here in the chat he says yo co just ran four hours and 58 seconds at the toronto marathon this weekend a 21 minute pb from 10 years ago wow took you 10 years to run a second marathon or another marathon it's incredible uh he said sadly he's not quite enough quite fit enough to crack the four hour mark as i was injured two weeks ago you know what though? i feel like four hours running four hours and 58 seconds your fitness is there it's just a matter you just need a different day some execution give it another crack you know get another crack at it is that the right phrase i think you could do it i think you could do it uh go running with oliver says no singlets for me though all shirtless runs <laughs> okay i you know what i did go shirtless today uh because i went for a run and so today was a weird day schedule wise so i actually went to the gym and did my leg day thing before the kids woke up. So I was at I was at the YMCA at 5 30 this morning. Can you believe it? Before 5 30. And it was cold and foggy. So I had like a long sleeve hoodie. And then I dropped off. Well, the one my older daughter takes herself just to the bus stop. And my younger daughter had a bunch of stuff she had to bring to school today. So I drove her and then went directly from dropping her off to go for my run. First, I did two laps around one of the loops that I do around here. It's about a four and a about a four and a half mile loop. First lap was fine. I got a little warm. And then I took it that top layer off. So I went shirtless today. It was nice. It was real nice. The second lap was very, very pleasant. Um, all right. The sleeve, the sleeved singer. I always have to look. I always every time I see that, the sleeve singer. See this username here? I, I see it and I always kind of just glance at things real quick when I'm looking at things in like in the chat on the side here and then what's going on on the screen. And I always think that it says the sleeve designer but it's the sleeve singer says what's going on for us non-elite runners. Could you explain why I always talk about the carbon issues? Some people who just join the channel might not get why that's so important. All right. Well, carbon um, is important in shoes specifically for race shoes. Now they're starting to trickle into other shoes, but let's not worry about that for a second because we're trying to keep things simple. Carbon in race shoes lets you have really, really nice squishy and springy foams, but the carbon makes it so that way it doesn't get too wobbly. And it gives you a nice little bounce too. So you kind of get like the best of both worlds. You want things that are nice and squishy and comfy. But you also want to still be springy and fast for your race shoes. So it's like, that's what the carbon does. It makes race shoes much more fun to race in. Because it gives the, the shoe designer more flexibility in terms of the foams, the materials that they can use. So, because now one foam doesn't have to do kind of like multiple jobs. You can rely on multiple different kinds of materials to do multiple kinds of jobs. I think I just made that complicated. Carbon in shoes makes it fun for racing for the most part. Some companies do it better than others, but that's kind of the nice shorthand for it. Um, Sean Devlin wants to know, Kofi, do you have all your gear organized by brand? Just wonder what makes it easier for filming, brand sponsored trips, etc. cetera. Uh, so yeah. On the, on the wall, I kind of try to do like a single brand shelf. So like these are all ASIC shoes. This row is all ASIC shoes. Below that, uh, this is like a Treyu. 
So there's a mix. So it starts mixing. But like over here, we've got like two rows of Adidas shoes. This one is all Solomon. This is all Brooks. You know, so like I do that just kind of in my mind to kind of keep things a little bit more organized. Like goes with like. Uh, in the closet, though, I keep like all the hydration packs together. Uh, I keep all the hats together. So like it goes by article. Um, and then for like shirts and shorts and stuff, I go by like type. So for my shorts in my closet, I have them aligned by like half tights, then three inch shorts, then five inch shorts, then seven inch shorts. And then for shirts, it's t-shirts all in one end and I arrange them by color, which is hard for me to do a little bit. Um, so like when I'm putting laundry away, I'm always like Roy G. Biv, Roy G. Biv, R.O red, orange, yellow. So I have to think about it that way. So that's, that's how I do that. Um, right now, because like, even though we moved to a bigger house and I have like a giant closet compared to what we used to have, I mean, it's a big closet objectively, but it's giant compared to what we used to have in the apartment. Um, even then I'm starting to fill up this space. And so, uh, I used to just get rid of stuff. I'm like, ah, oh, this is two seasons old. I don't need it anymore. If I go on a trip or something, I'm not going to, uh, be wearing two seasons old stuff. I have to be wearing current stuff. So like I'll either buy more or there's some more. But sometimes like some brands, like they don't turn over their product as quickly. And so I've been now for stuff that like I'm not, it's not in my everyday rotation, but I want to still hold on to it in case I do a longer trip, like more than like a day or two uh, with a single brand. So I'm starting to save those and I'm putting those into bins and that is arranged by, uh, by, by brand. So that's one of the ways that I do that. Frank says, I haven't seen a straight adios review in a long time. Yeah. Well, you know, their timing has been weird on stuff for Adidas. So like, uh, we're like 10 months since the adios pro three came out. Oh, the, Oh, just the regular adios. Yeah. I think the five, Maybe the four was the last one I reviewed. I think I reviewed the four. The five, I think I did an initial review. I did not review the audio six. I'm probably not going to review any more audios. I'm not sure. I'm not that interested in it. There, I, I'm having a hard time differentiating for audios um, now when I would use that over to Kumisan as a marathoner. I think maybe if I were a 10K, 5K person, there would be ways I could differentiate them. But for me, there I, I don't really i don't there I'm, I'm not running enough miles that i could do all those reviews you know what i mean does that make sense um uh, calvin says which bin does the tracksmith puma collab go into uh that's still on the rack i still wear those so i haven't put that one away yet there, i have a blue shirt and then i have like the short sleeve sweatshirt that gets arranged by color Affluent Journey says, I got a top 10 finish at the Coca Dona 38 mile race. Awesome. Wait, this one. I want this one. We could do that and we could do the applause too. Nice. Also had a 71 miles and seven day distance PR. That's a, you did all that like at the same time. Oh man. How does that work? Incredible. Good job, AJ. Uh, Keaton Doris, Keaton Derek says, are you coming out to the RBC Brooklyn half? I went last year and I had a lot of fun. It was a great time. We did a little shakeout with Ben Parks and Sarah Place. That was really fun. I got to meet them in person for the first time. I'm not going to make it out there this year. So that's unfortunate. Um, but I, yeah, May is always hard for me. Last year I was able to do it this year. I, Cause I got, I got a lot of nieces and nephews that are graduating from things. Next year is going to be kind of chill. I think next year I'm going to try to do Tiger Claw. I've been talking with Ginger Runner about that for years. Um, basically since it started. And every year, the weekend he picks, I've got a niece or nephew graduating from something. So next year I think I could do it. But this year, something's happening that I can't go to RBC Brooklyn half. Scott Scroo Scott Stroh said said that though. That, I mean it, it was a fun race. I mean I didn't do it. I don't I don't know that I want to do it. 
because uh, it was super hot the day that I watched it. But it's a fun race to spectate because I just hopped on the train and I got from like the beginning of the race towards the end of the race. And there's that one really long stretch where like it's like six lanes wide and they shut down the whole street. And there's plenty of room if you want to start chasing runners, filming people. There, there's just a lot of opportunity and room to kind of do that kind of thing. Um, and you get a really good view. And it's not that crowded from a spectator's perspective. So it was a lot of fun. And then, you know, I think that like, I don't know if I went with like a bigger group or planned it better. I didn't realize it. I mean, I knew it was ending in Coney Island. I didn't realize that'd be like on the beach, on the beach. You know what I mean? Pretty much. So like, that's, that's a, d a different way I could have played the day out. Maybe I would do that. I don't know. But for next time, maybe. Mm hmm. Brian Lang says, it's my birthday today, and I have to do birthday squats. 25 squats at body weight, which is 200 pounds. That's pretty incredible. Let's do this one. Yay, happy birthday. 25 squats at body weight. That's a lot. That's a lot, man. Um, I did squats today at 75, 60% body weight. <laughs> I, did, I, did, I did six of them. Well, I did three sets of six. I think next week I might go up and wait a little bit. My back is feeling good. I haven't hurt my back till that since that last real bad time. So my back's been feeling good. So I think I'm gonna go up. I think I'm. I think I'm. I think I'm ready. And Keaton says uh, I'm graduating physical therapy school on the 18th. Awesome! What? He says congrats to your fame on the graduation. So thank you. I'll pass that message along. Well, congratulations to you too, Keaton. It's amazing. Um, all right, let's get to this package from rabbit. It's a small one. I think there's only one thing in here. I think I know what's in here. I'm going to try not to, uh, accidentally cut, cut it open, uh, or cut the garment. I'm surprised that I, I, I haven't done it yet. But some of these bags are like hard to open, you know? Okay. Like paperwork, invoice order type stuff. And then there's this, which is, I don't know if I could do this color. I really like the color. It's very different than any other shorts that I have though. These are shorts from Rabbit. Check out this color. Whoo. I think this is like a burnt orange. Is that what it is? There are the oh, Fuel and Fly 5-inch Paprika. But there are the shorts that go with this shirt. So this shirt, see how it has like these like holes in it the, for the mesh on the side? It's not the whole shirt. It's just like two like rows of it kind of on each side. The, sh the shorts have matching holes, speed holes. They make you run faster. Um, but I really was like digging the color. And I just like it when there's like hole, like holes. <laughs> I like it when there's holes in my clothes. Um, but I really like in like the, I, I keep calling them perforations, but they're not. They're just mesh, like laser cut. I think they're called laser cut holes, but I just really like them. Uh, there's a nice color matched liner in here and a decent number of pockets. So here, this thing, here's what's unusual about it. There's one big back pocket on it. Pretty sure a phone can fit in here. Let me see. I got my phone out. Andrew Scott says, sorry, did you just say speed hold? Yeah, speed holds. They make you go faster. <laughs> I think you should buy this car. Um, yeah. So phone goes in here. I have a 13, iPhone 13 mini though. So if you have like a bigger phone, I don't know if it'll fit because this is a little tight fit. Um, this case is making it hard to get in there though. But it will fit. Oof. This is not, not roomy. Well, I don't know. Maybe I can't get the, oh, here we go. Phone's inside. But then there's like inside pockets too. See back here? So drop-in pockets, but they're into, uh, on the inside of the waistband. Kind of like how Tracksmith does it. There's also a keyhole on the front, or a keyhole, a key pocket on the front. 
Oh, double front pockets. There's these all, all sorts of little pockets in here. So yeah, there's four extra pockets on this thing. And then the one big zipper pocket in the back. So I think this will be nice. This will be really good for summer running. This material is nice and light and flowy. There you go. Fuel and fly. Five inch. Low rise, semi relaxed. These are all words that they said, not me. Focus. There you go. Focus. Low rise, semi relaxed. Five inch. Yeah. Pretty excited about these. Mm, all right. And that's it. That's it for packages today. Daniel Suvi says, yeah, my phone fits, but I just need tons of hassling. LOL. <laughs> and Lou says, Kobe's is going to tear the pocket before I wear the short. Nope. I managed not to tear it. So there we go. Uh, and I'm trying to think if there's ever a time where I've done that. I don't think so. <laughs> Eric says, all I asked for was a pair of freaking shorts with some laser beam holes. <laughs> uh Mm. Lala P says, are they cut with a laser? I don't know, but like, I always feel like these, like, I, they always call these holes that are very, like, very small and fine work, uh, fi like, fi like sizing. It's very meticulous in like place. I always feel like they're called laser cut. I don't know. And Sean says, when you run really fast, the holes whistle. <laughs> Uh, Calvin said, this behold was whistle like a turbo. <laughs> oh, that's funny. All right, Scuba Sun says, a PR bell. He needs a, he needs a cowbell. 20-minute uh, PR at the Flying Pig Marathon. Wow. Scuba Sun, that's incredible. You ran more than a minute per mile faster than last time. That's incredible. Good job. Whew. Mm, yeah, Calvin Hawk says, iPhone mini gang. Yeah, I feel like uh, my iPhone 11 broke. I was using the iPhone 11 Pro. I was hoping to make it through to the, like the next season. You know what I mean? Because it was released the new phones, like when kids go back to school. And so I was hoping to make it through the summer, but mine was just not going to make it. I dropped mine at TRE at the Take the Bridge event. Um, and it landed like, I even had it in a case, but it landed like right on its face and it cracked. And then I brought it to like a you break I fix or something like that. One of those like, you know, iPhone broken phone screen repair places. And, uh, you know, I was like, is this still going to be waterproof? They're like, oh, yeah, yeah. It's just a different kind of screen that you have on there. But, like, it'll be as waterproof as it was before. And it, it definitely wasn't. Like, water would get in there. And then the phone started acting funny. Yeah, and then after a while, I was like, I can't deal with this. So I had to get a new phone. I got the 13 mini. Um. We have to. We drove yesterday. The whole family went over for my daughter's uh, track meet, and uh, my I wanted to work on yesterday's video, which was the Propel version four video. Uh, I wanted to work on it in the car, so my wife drove, and um, she had plugged her phone into the car, and I'm looking at it, and it's just like huge. I'm like, "What is? Did you get the big one?" She's like, "No, I just got the regular iPhone 13." I'm like, "Oh, this is enormous." She's like, "What is yours like?" And I showed her mine, and she's like, oh, this is small. This is nice. Um, yeah. She made fun of me. She's like, oh, well, you're, try you're, pretend you're trying to pretend that you're not old, and so you're using the small phone, trying to make a point. I'm like, I don't, I don't think that joke works the way you think it does. <laughs> but, yeah. But I like it. I, I think that... Um, more phone brands need to make small phones. My favorite phone of all time. I have two favorite phones of all time. Palm Pre, the one with the slider. Do you remember that one? Oh, that was very satisfying. I had a physical keyboard. Uh, that was a great phone. And then the other phone that I really liked was my Nexus 4. That was, for me, that was peak phone, Nexus 4. Took good pictures. Battery lasted a really long time. Felt good in hand, nice small size or just the right size. So that was it. That was it for me. Sean says, I have the 12 mini here. Give me the 4S again. The smaller, the better. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, because the 4S then became like the S, the iPhone SE, the first version of the SE, right? And then the SE went to like uh, like the iPhone 7 size. That's what we got for my daughter, you know? Keaton, if you missed the home button, you should get the iPhone SE. My daughter has a home button on hers, which I felt like during the pandemic, I felt like the home button with the thumb login was the better way to go because then you're for a while like it was, wouldn't recognize your face with a mask on you know so i don't know aj remembers the og razor do you remember that phone my wife and i had matching razors <laughs> it was nice um but i mean if we're gonna go that far back for me my my my, my favorite like of like the pre-smartphone like of the dumb phones was i had a Motorola star tech the battery life was so good on it that I got a slim battery for it because I wanted it to fit in the pocket better, you know? <laughs> Leona says that, uh, oh no, it was Calvin. It says the rumors of the SE is going to be the mini's chassis. See that, that, mm. see if that was going to happen, then I would get another SE. But now I have the 13 mini, which is fine. It works. Um, I don't know. There was a time where I was like super into phones and now I'm just not that much into, I think we've reached peak phone already, you know? And so I'm like, ah, they all do what I need. I don't need to upgrade. I don't feel the need to upgrade anymore. Also my, the nature of my work has changed a little bit. So I don't, I'm not doing the same kinds of things on my phone that I was before. So it's not, I, I don't care. It's basically what it comes down to. I'm trying to use my phone less. In fact, you know, Terrence Huey says Pixel 5a for life. It still has a headphone. It does? Uh, Elliot Endures wants the sidekick back. <laughs> I never had the sidekick, but one of my friends did. Um, and he was just always on that thing. Yeah, that was wild. Checkout says the next out with the walk the well the walkie talkie bleep bleep was this was the S man. I mean, it was, but it was so annoying. I I just I didn't want that the chirp chirp. I didn't like that. It was uh it was ostentatious. I felt like I don't know. Mika says I'm using the iPhone SE, but the battery life is awful. Have to take a battery pack with me on long runs, just on long trail runs, just in case. That is pretty awful. I feel like you need a new battery, which they do. But then again, then you run into the potential issue like I had when I had my phone screen replaced, where sometimes it's just not waterproof any, anymore. You know, because you can always get the battery replaced. Because I feel like the the internals are good enough for most of what we're doing on our phone. Like I feel like until there's like another generation of like internet apps or mobile apps that need more horsepower. Like I feel like th there's never a time where I'm like this iPhone 13 mini is great, but I sure we I had the iPhone 13 what do they call it? Pro, Max, whatever it is. So that way like I could take advantage of like the next level bump up in processing, you know. Andrew Scott says, closing a flip phone to end a call was very satisfying. It sure was. You know, you just slap it shut. But you know what I always wanted? And I never was able to get one because they were expensive. So instead, I would just get the Nokia face plates to make it look like it. The ones where you would click the button and then like the it, part of the phone would slide out. Like you would click it and like part would slide out. And then you could slap it shut like that. You click it to, you click it, it would open. And then it would also expose like the number pad. That, that was my favorite design. I don't know what they called those, but it was like just slider phones, I guess. Uh, Davin says, they need to make phones smaller or pockets bigger, but it seems both are moving opposite directions. You know what I think is funny about that is that I think that like all people that try to like make predictions on the future of like how technology would go, everyone got big phones wrong. Remember when we used to call them phablets and they were like super dorky? I mean, I still think that jumbo phones are kind of dorky. But like, um, I remember like watching an old Futurama episode and like the phone was like the, the people would hold it like pinching their two fingers together. And that's how you would hold the phone. 
You know, I'm like, that's what they thought like a thousand years from now phones would be. And I suppose there's still time for that to be true. But right now, the future of phones seems to be like, we'll have projection technology embedded into our temples and it'll shoot out like a hologram image that takes up our entire peripheral vision. You know what I mean? I, you know, I feel like we're, that's more likely to happen. <laughs> that's That's my prediction. Um, Asperina says, all my thighs with pockets get pulled down by my phone. The Samsung Z Fold, right now the only way is to use a belt. You you have a holster? Do you hear the holster? I never had the holster. I'm trying to think if my dad ever used the holster. I don't know. So we, see, I like, I, hmm. Yeah, I don't think he, he might. You know what? I'm pretty sure he did. I'm pretty sure he did. But I never used the holster. Mm. Carrie Run says the holster. <laughs> oh man, weren't those great? Uh, Steve says I thought the Nokia thirty two ten was peak mobile. What more could they do? <laughs> when you could play the snake on there, that was me. Or like the ball breaker game, like the Arkanoid uh, clone games. Those were amazing. I don't think, I don't know. Did I have a 33,000 series? I know I had like a 5,600 or something like that. I had a couple of different ones. I had, I had a, what I did with my Nokia phone, I put an aftermarket antenna on it. So that way it would light up like a blue light would turn on on the antenna every time I was on the phone. So you couldn't also, you couldn't fake, you know how people would pretend to be on the phone sometimes. You'd be like, yeah, I'm on the phone. I'm important. You couldn't fake it because you had the actual light. On <laughs> that's how mine was. <laughs> yeah. Frank says, "Do the current folding phones hang up when you fold them?" I I don't know. I don't. I've never. I don't. I don't think I'll. I'm not sure. I'll try the folding phone. You know, I'm not sure. I don't even like phones with like the like the wallet cases on it because it just makes the phone thicker. You know, the folding phone makes the phone thicker. The length isn't the problem for me. It's the thickness that's the problem, you know? So I'm not sure like the folding phone is really for me. Tales de, Tales de Mileto says, long live sending files via infrared. Oh my goodness. You remember how long that would take? <laughs> Try to send someone like a picture or something. Brian Lee says, what's a landline? Do you know who has a landline that I found out today? Matt Chittum, the rambling runner, has a landline. Apparently, we're on a call today. And all of a sudden, there's like a ringing in the background. And he goes, sorry, guys, that's my landline. And I was like, what? Why do you have a landline? Didn't make sense. He was on a Zoom call with like eight other people with me. And he's talking about his landline. He's like, yeah. He's like, we, my son's first communion was this weekend. So we had a party at our house. So I was cleaning things up and I think it must've got plugged back in for some reason. And now it's just ringing all the time. <laughs> Only people that he's like, I don't even know the number for it anymore. I'm like, Dude, why you're paying for it. Why are you, why would you keep paying for that? So I don't know. Terry Farlong has a landline. My wife was like, should we get a landline now? when we moved to the house? She's like, should we get a landline now in case the kids need to call it? I'm like, let's just get one of the kids a phone first. You know? Hmm. Bisha mom says, I have a tabletop rotary phone. Saved me many times with power outage. Do regular landlines not work in a power outage? I thought they, they did. Doesn't it? Uh, I don't know. Uh, maybe not. Hmm. Uh, when we were living at Uncle Cecil's house a couple summers ago for about a month, uh, Uncle Cecil still has a rotary phone on the wall. And uh, we're having dinner in the kitchen. And you could see it, see it from where we're sitting in the kitchen. And we're sitting around the table. And I'm like, kids, do you know what that thing is over there? And they're like, uh, yeah, it's a telephone. I know it's a telephone because it looks like one of the baby's toys. I'm like, yes. Do you know how to use it? And they're like, yeah, you just pick it up and start talking. I'm like, but how do you dial? And they're like, 
uh, they could <laughs> they tried to figure it out. They couldn't figure out how to like dial it. <laughs> hmm. Martha says, "How about Uncle Dave, the car mechanic? You know, uh, I think in his office he's got a old school cordless phone." You know, what was it like the 5.4 megahertz phone? You pull it out. I think that's what they have there at the shop. But he, David also collects old things like memorabilia and stuff, mostly car related, you know, like old gas station signs and stuff like that, which makes sense. It's on brand for him. Um, I bet you he's got a rotary phone somewhere. I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Martha says there was an IG reel of a challenge to some teens to use a landline phone. They didn't have a clue how to dial. Yeah, I mean, like if you don't, I mean, remember speed dials and stuff like that. Uh, and then, like, I mean, people don't know phone numbers anymore. I was at IKEA the other day when I was buying all these shelves, and now there's like an IKEA, not like a membership, but like a shoppers club or whatever. You know, like at the grocery store. And uh, I didn't have the card. We never have the card. So we always have to look it up. And so like, you know, I tried looking up by my number. It, it didn't work. They're like, okay, we'll try email. I looked up by my email. It didn't work. I tried looking up by my wife's email. It didn't work. And then there, the person trying to help me was like, well, maybe your wife's phone number. And I'm like, probably. And I just like stared at it for a while. I was like, I don't think I know it. It took me a couple of tries to figure out my, my, what my wife's phone number was. <sighs> All right. Axel Molly says, please suggest the lightest running shoes and comfortable according to you. Well, I feel like you're asking for two different things. If you want lightest running shoes, you're looking at like racing shoes. If you want comfortable racing, sh comfortable shoes, they're not racing shoes. So that's going to be kind of difficult. I'll say if you're looking for a, co a combination, though, of light and comfy, it's not going to be the lightest. It's not going to be the most comfortable. But I'd say probably the Rebel version 3. This one. Very light, very comfy. Mm. Ooh, Eric says same thing. Rebel version 3. There you go. Eric, we've been on the same wavelength the past couple of days. Basketball shorts. Rebel version three. Yeah. We, we, we've been doing that. Mm, Ted and Ruth says shared landlines. Remember them? Yeah. My wife told, I, I don't remember those, but my wife had one. They called them party lines. And uh, like her and the neighbor that lives, he still lives there across the street. Um, they had shared a party line, although they shared the party line with not the current neighbor who's lived there for forever, but the person that lived there before then. I mean, my, my wife's, my parents, my, my in-laws have been at that house for 40 years. So when they first moved in, they got a party line, but then there was three girls and a boy in my wife's family. And so, uh, at some point, like the neighbors were never able to use the phone when they wanted to, cause their girls were on the phone. Which is how it was, the story was told to me. But like knowing my brother-in-law, it's probably my brother-in-law. I don't, I don't want a gender stereotype, you know. But there was four kids, and once they got to like teenage years, um, they needed to get their own line. So no, no more, no more party line. <laughs> Mar oh, this is a crazy story. Martha says once we were renting somewhere and accidentally got hooked up with a share of line. The strangers, quote unquote, on the other line turned out to be friends we hadn't seen in years. Now that's awkward. <laughs> You're like, oh, uh, hey guys, how you guys been? Uh, I thought we were supposed to get, weren't we supposed to get dinner like uh, two years ago? You know? <laughs> uh, I mean, that's kind of cool though. That's really cool. And Martha says, we were all pissed about it until we figured that out. <laughs> Oh man, that's weird. So weird. Midlife runner said, for real? In San Antonio, you called it the Fiesta Line. Was it really called the Fiesta Line or is that a San Antonio joke? That's amazing if it's called the Fiesta Line. I'm going to tell that to my, my, my mother in law. She's going to love that story. 
even if it don't, don't tell me if it's not true. I'm just going to tell her that that's what happened. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Stan Barkley says we need to have a Kofuzi phone club. I don't know. I love to, I love stories about the phone, but I actually really dislike using the phone. Uh, I, I mean, ugh. do people still have that like anxiety over like calling, like, when you're like teenagers and like you're when like you're calling up a person you like, you know, you always are like, all right, I got to think of like, all right, here's three things that if there's no conversation that you could fall back on and talk about, you know, like how, you have to, you have to map out the conversation ahead of time just in case. Do they still do that? I have to imagine it's even more so like that just because like people aren't conversing anymore. That was back when I was at peak conversing, you know, and now I, I don't, like, I couldn't tell you what my phone ring sound is because no one ever calls me, which is how I like it. I have a lot of Zoom calls, even phone calls I schedule at this point because it just feels so rude to just call someone up. Um, so, yeah, I don't know what my phone ring is. It's probably whatever the default is for iPhone. So, like, Kofuzi phone, phone Club is funny in theory. If it's a group where we get together at a scheduled time on, on Zoom... And talk about all phones, but I don't actually want to call people. <laughs> Sean says his kids FaceTime all the time. Yeah, see, I feel like FaceTiming is, I would say, is probably just as unnerving as phone calls would be. But even that, especially if you were like calling up, you know, a crush. Because then they could see you and stuff and like what's going on in your house. And then your siblings could embarrass you and things like that, you know? I don't know. That would, yeah, I don't even like FaceTime either. I don't know what the FaceTime, I, whatever is the default is what my FaceTime ring is. The only people that FaceTime me are my nieces and nephews on oh, my sis, my sister's kids. And they're not even FaceTiming me. They're just trying to get in touch with my kids so they could play Roblox. <laughs> mm. CV76 says, call the radio channel. I'd like to dedicate this song to my wife. Uh, you know, I was thinking, remember when we did that for a little while? We had the we had the, the live stream was a call-in show. Um, I was thinking about bringing that back a little bit. Because, you know, I've been listening to this uh, podcast called Bellied Up. Uh, it's from two guys. They're, I guess, famous on the internet for being Midwesterners. And they just, they do a podcast from a dive bar. And they just crush bush lights all day. Or Milwaukee's best. And they answer calls about like, should Alaska be considered the Midwest? Or uh, why do we like ranch dressing so much? You know, things like that, you know? Um, and I've, I've just been really enjoying that one. And that podcast is driven primarily by calling questions. So I guess it's kind of like this with the chat, but it's doing it uh, with call callers calling in, asking for tips. Uh, while they're sitting at a bar, they're bellied up to the bar. That's why it's called the bellied up podcast. You know, I don't know. Um, yeah. Matthias says Charlie and the other guy, my, my M miles, I think his name is. They're funny. Yeah. Yeah. Stevie 36 says, yeah, I, uh, I remember Shannon. I remember that too. That was fun. <laughs> Shannon says, <laughs> no, please don't bring back the calls. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Oh man. All right. Nathaniel says, I did it, Kofuzi. I just ran my first ever marathon on Sunday. Congratulations, Nathaniel. That's great news. Awesome. How was it? Did you have fun? I hope you had fun. I'm sure it was hard. The first one's always so incredibly difficult. Hmm. Yeah, Eric says the phone number should be 1 800 phone me one. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like that's going to probably get some accidental calls from somewhere else, maybe. Calvin listens to Bellied Up. He says, so good. Peak Midwest energy. It is good. But you know what? This last episode, I was listening to it on my long run, the one where I was wearing the uh, rabbit Hawaiian shirt in the Ultimate Direction Race Fest. So I'm listening to that one. I'm enjoying the whole thing. Until the end, there's a caller about a guy. Uh, who lives in Illinois, it's like southern central Illinois somewhere, 
and is moving up to Wisconsin, and he doesn't want to be a fib to F in Illinois. Uh, I guess B, the B is also a bad word, too. Um, and then they were like, well, you know, being from Illinois is not that bad. It's just the being from the Chicago area that's uh, I don't want to be associated with. And I'm just like, mm, I don't understand you guys. When the Bears do well, you guys want to talk about the Bears. You want to talk about deep dish pizza. You want to talk about Dick uh, and all that stuff and the Sox or the Cubs. But when it comes to, like, I don't know, anything else, it's like, oh, Chicago sucks. I'm like, whatever, dudes. So that 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 I was like, I gotta change this. I can't lose this. This is getting me all fired up. Um, yeah. So, cause we, I mean, I, you know, there's definitely the CIBs. Whenever we go up to like, uh, like Lake Geneva or something like that. So, I don't know. I don't. I don't like that. I feel like you know that's. I don't. We don't need any Midwest on Midwest violence. You know. So I wasn't. I wasn't about that. That part annoyed me. But otherwise, I feel like the show's pretty good. I, you know, I don't mind it when they give Indiana a hard time. <laughs> uh, yeah. Man who runs his back. What's going on, man? He says, yo, what's going on, everyone? Finally, the schedule's allowing me to show up again. How's everyone doing? It's good to see you. Um, yeah, Martha says, speaking of the old days, who else remembers not really Hank Aaron? And does anyone know what happened? That guy who's, I couldn't understand that guy sometimes. Sometimes he was cool, and then other times he was just grouchy. Remember that guy? Uh, I don't know. Mm. Brian Lane wants to know if I've heard of the, the genre Midwest emo. You'd probably enjoy it. Was it like Jimmy Eat World? I probably would. I feel like emo like hit when I was like right after college, you know, for me. And I feel like your musical tastes like get stuck in concrete in those like first few years out of college. And yeah, that was definitely part of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Nathaniel says for his marathon, Vancouver was amazing. People cheering me, pushed me through the last 10 K. That's awesome. Really cool. Really, really cool. You know, I've never been to Vancouver. Um, I've been to Seattle. I know that's not exactly the same, but in my mind for this Midwesterner originally from New Jersey, Vancouver and Seattle are basically kind of like two sides of the same city. Uh, but I'd like to go to Vancouver sometime. I feel like, I feel like I would enjoy it there. I also feel like I would probably think of the same thing of Vancouver as I feel of Seattle, that it's the setting for like a lifetime movie uh, where like the couple that's been kind of kind of seriously dating for a long time decides to go camping out in the woods. And one of them turns out to be a serial killer. You know, that kind of movie. I feel like those are all shot in Vancouver or outside of Seattle. That's what I think about every time I'm there. I'm like, this is like a lifetime movie set over here. Because the cities are very clean. Seattle is an extremely clean city. And uh, that's, that's what makes it feel fake to me sometimes. I really enjoy Seattle, but like that part about it makes it feel like an entire, just the whole place is, a, is a, a movie set. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Brian says, Vancouver is like four to six hour drive from Seattle. <laughs> That's really very far, very far. I had no idea. Uh, and Brian says, you know, it's too expensive to shoot in Seattle. So everything is, they're actually in Vancouver, but they're probably like set, you know, in, in, uh, in Seattle. That's what I'm thinking. And Tony says, you'd love uh, Stanley Park. It's the best park in the world. I mean, yeah. My wife and I were just talking. I, I don't, I tell you guys all the time about how my wife and I were just talking about making a trip up to Canada because we need to go at some point, but we were just talking about it again. And I was like, remember, I was like, remember how we were always talking about going to Toronto? And she's like, no. And I'm like, what do you mean? We've had this conversation like six times. So I had to remind her that we always wanted to go to Toronto. <laughs> uh. mm. Uh, enter a matrix you know, enter matrix says do you run trails I mean 
I think it depends. If anyone wants to play knifey spoony about it, then not really. But, you know, I get out in the woods. I run on the dirt a little bit from time to time. It depends. Uh, right now, especially in the summer, I tend to do it a lot more than I do uh, in the winter. Uh, I like spring marathons. And that means winter marathon training. So it's just, so I don't do as much trail running there. I usually do a lot of recovery runs in the in the woods. So, uh, but yeah, I like to run trails. It's fun. I don't have the access to like the most. I have a lot of access to woods and like wilderness, but not a lot of, like, you know, mountainous trails and stuff. And Tim Sue says, Co, it did take me another decade to run another marathon. Only got back into running after finding your math videos back in September. So thank you for that. You know what's you know what is interesting is those videos keep like someone was who someone was telling me here in the chat that like one of those videos has like two hundred thousand views. And I'm like, what? That's incredible. And I, I think I remember saying, had I known that it had any opportunity to have that kind of views, I would have tried harder on 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 making those videos. I think I kind of just slapped those together. Um, but yeah, yeah, I'm glad that that was helpful. I was thinking about that a lot today because I was watching a Stephen Scullion video about how he does threshold work. Um, and so I was thinking about like, well, he was like reciting some of his numbers for like aerobic threshold, um, and how long he, you know, what kind of repetitions and distance he does for that. And that got me just thinking about heart rate and stuff. And the overall way that I've been kind of understanding a lot of that is I remember having a conversation with Andy FOD runner a long time ago about doing a lot of like zone three running, which is kind of like not taking an easy day, easy or a hard day, hard, but doing a lot of moderate days. And we were talking about like, does that work for people? How come when I've done that before, I've had some good results if that's supposed to not work, you know? And, uh, I've been thinking about that and how it relates to people who have or haven't gone through some low heart rate training. I still think about it a lot. You know, I don't know. Um, let's see. Let's go down and catch up with you guys in the chat here. Hmm. Frank says, I always wear trail shoes on the Jeep double tracks, even though I don't think of it being the same as actual trail running. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I feel like if it's not going to be mostly paved surfaces, I'll find a trail shoe. Even if it's like crushed gravel. Like when I run on um, Heritage Trail, which is a rail trail uh, by my in-laws, I've worn, I've worn like meta racers on there, zoom streaks. Uh, I think I've worn carbon plated shoes, other carbon plated shoes on there. Like, I think I've worn Vaporfly on there before. And you could do that. But for the most part, I just like a light trail shoe for those. I don't know. It just seems like it makes more sense. Um, and Calvin Hong says, that's not a real trail. Yeah, I mean, I feel like there's a lot of people that do that. And sometimes when people ask me, like, do you run trails? I feel like what they really want to do is ultimately, I don't think that that's what this person was doing, but I feel like a lot of times people want to be like, you don't run real trails. And so they'll preface it with like some like lead up questions in a weird way. I don't know. Maybe I'm just being like overly defensive because sometimes, uh, you know, I got a lot of weird interactions with the DMS a lot of times. So maybe that's what it is. Obi-Wan says, oh, my goo, knifey spoony reference. Ah, oh, that hit hard. Yeah, I, it's really the only time I do it. But, like, it's the one, it's like the, I don't know, I'm, I'm, you know what, I bet there's probably lots of places in running where people do a lot of knifey spoony. But I feel like in trail running, every time I do a trail running review, I get, oh, that's not a mud, that's not a trail shoe for muddy conditions. I have those and I slipped around like crazy. Where I'm at, that wouldn't even pass muster for even like a semi-dry day. You know, I get a lot of that kind of stuff. And I'm like, okay, cool. I've literally shown you the kinds of terrain where I run in it, and I've told you whether it was good or not. 
you know, you could take it or leave it. But I get a lot of that. You know where else I get it? And which is not the main reason. The main reason I don't do these reviews anymore are just because they take so long and it's really hard to condense it into a viewable duration of video. But I get a lot of flack whenever I do a running watch review. Like suddenly, or I don't know. It's just like everyone who apparently has a master's degree in GPS technology all of a sudden is interested in the videos that I'm making. And just like, guys, we're talking about consumer grade GPS here. Like, uh, what do you want me to test now? And I'm like, yeah, this is ridiculous. So testing running watches is not my favorite because it draws out a lot of like contrarian people, I feel like. Trail running shoes does that a lot too. Not as bad as GPS watches, but there's a lot of that in trail running too. But I'm just trying to just ignore it, you know. <laughs> Jason Summon says running watch reviews are the worst. <laughs> Uh, they just reviewed the Sunto. The, did you? I thought you. I saw just saw you had a new video for the new Sunto. You know, I went to that thing. They had to sign up to go to like this webinar and something like that. I think I was supposed to do something because I was actually interested in reviewing it, but I think I had to email them. You know what? I think I didn't email them and follow up because it was going to be like a one thousand dollar watch or something like that. I'm like, there's no. I I can't review that properly. I'm not the right person for it. You know, so. But I'm glad that you reviewed it because it did look like I'm like, oh, that's interesting. Sunto might be relevant again, you know. Lou says, doesn't DC Rainmaker do gear like watches? Yeah, he does. Well, the thing is, Chase is so good at it. Matt Legrand, DC Rainmaker, Desfit. Like, there's not a lot that I can add. You know what I mean? So I'm just like, I don't know. Where, where do I really fit in there? You know? So I feel like... Mm -hmm. It's not something that is I'm passionate about, you know. Yeah, Chase says it was eight hundred thirty nine bucks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not. It's it's not. It's not. It's not. That that Sunto was not cheap. But I feel like if you were Sunto, what would you do, Dave? Like you know what I mean? Like uh, like Koros has got you beat on on price. Right. Garmin's got you beat on like ecosystem. Like, how do you like make yourself relevant again? I feel like you got to pick either really good. You got to go, well, Koros already beat you there, but you got to out Koros Koros, or you got to find a, a spot in like the high end market, you know? So I don't know. I don't know. Cause like there isn't like, I don't think that there's a huge demand for, I feel like, all right, we're going to reinvent this brand with $500 watches. I don't think is the way to go. You know, so, so I'm like, all right, bold move. I wish him the best. I want to say my second GPS watch. I think my first GPS watch ever was the Garmin Vivo Active 3. I think my second one was like the Sunto 5, I want to say. I had the Sunto for a really long time. You know, so, yeah, it's a, it's a tough one. Uh, but yeah, I, I just don't, I, I, mean, I want Sinto to do better. I think they got, they got all weird sidetracked when they were like, we're switching all our watches to like, uh, Wear OS. And I was like, Oof, I don't know if that's the right way to go. So I don't know. Mika says that solar version seems interesting. Yeah, that's, 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 I really am interested in the solar. I'm like, I spent enough time outside. Shouldn't that help with battery life? I don't know. Mm. Obi Run says, I'm still using the Vivo Active 3. Really? That's amazing. Mm. Calvin says, Could Koros merge with Polar? I think that would be the move. Well, I don't know. Um, yeah, I don't know. Is it, is it, I don't know. Is that, I don't know the industry well enough. Is it ripe for consolidation? I, I don't think so. I think we need more brands, is what I think we need. I'd like to see Wahoo do more. Um, cause they had an interesting kind of like first offering, and then I don't know what happened to it. You know, I don't know. Mm. 
Yeah, Dave says, and I think you're probably, I mean, I think you're right. You're, you're, I mean, you live in this space. I think the vertical will stop the bleeding from people abandoning the brand for higher end options, but I'm not sure it'll attract too many Garmin or Chorus users. We shall see. Yeah, I know. It'll be, it's, it's an interesting time. It's an interesting time. All right. <laughs> and Frank says, I dread a future where Amazfit is a dominant watch company. Are you, do you think that would happen? I'm not sure. Uh, I keep getting invitations to review the Amazfit. And I'm like, I don't know. There was what, what brand of watch did I review? Uh, that it was one of like the Chinese brands and it was kind of like Amazfit. I reviewed a couple of them and I was just like, these are not great smart watches or activity watches. I'm like, I'm not going to keep reviewing these. I don't know. I don't know. Eric thinks that we'll see some mergers in the tech soon. Could be, could be. Um, all right. I think that's a good place to leave it for today, guys. Uh, went a lot longer than I was anticipating today, but I'm just having a good time chatting with you guys. Reliving some old tech and talking about some new stuff. That was fun. Uh, tomorrow we'll have some more packages. I got to go pick some more up. I'm out of packages at home, but I know I got email saying that there's more at the PO box. So I got to go pick those up today and then we'll unbox some more packages. We may or may not have a video tomorrow. Maybe it'll be Thursday. I'm not sure. But either way, I'll definitely see you guys in the live stream again. 1 p.m. Central Time, same time as today. Hopefully see you then. Till then, be safe out there, everybody.